Hey, what's up, everybody? It is Norm. It is November 1st, and this is day one of Persecuted Church Awareness Month. So, um, a little background. Again, I've made a couple of videos, so I'm going to keep this quick. Why do I do this? For eight years, we've been doing this um, every November as just something to bring awareness, to stir up some people, to pray for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted simply because they have faith in Jesus Christ, simply because they believe in Jesus Christ. Um, some of the stories that I will share over the next month uh, involve Catholics, involve um, Coptics, Pentecostal, you know, you name it across the sphere um whereas i don't there's i mean there's different levels of you know i mean orthodoxy we would consider catholicism outside of orthodoxy but for the purpose of what we're doing this month uh i'm including those stories when they come up simply because islam or uh those who persecute christians around the world don't know um, and aren't probably uh, they're killing Catholics over there because of the Catholics faith in Christ so where we would place them outside of orthodoxy this still falls under the purview of Christian persecution so we're going to leave that out there I'm sure I'm going to get a couple of emails here and there I always do when I tell a story about Catholics um persecuted around the world i get the, the comments that catholics aren't christian and so on so there's an explanation on that but ultimately the reason why is for god to be glorified for the gospel to be preached i will do my very best and i i think i've accomplished it over the last eight years of every video i make every time i tell a story um, of a brother or sister being persecuted, I am going to work the gospel into it. Because simply put, that's why these people are dying. These are being imprisoned or being beaten or whatever it is that is happening to them as they are persecuted around the world is simply because of their faith in Christ. The fact that they understand, majority of them, understand that they are wretched sinners in need of a Savior, and that Jesus Christ went to the cross, paid the penalty for their sin, and died so that they might be forgiven, rose again on the third day, proving that he was who he said he was, that the, the sacrifice was accepted by God the Father, and that Jesus was able to do what he promised to do, and now sits at the right hand of the Father interceding on our behalf. Um, this is why people die. This is why people are willing to lay down their life for a gospel that they believe has nothing to do with them, but has everything to do with what Christ did for them. And so when we, you're, you're not going to find this in many places in the States right now, because the majority of our, our gospel preaching around the States is, um, prosperity gospel, health and wealth, um, and that doesn't hold up well under persecution. Um, when you tell somebody that they're going to have their best life now, that doesn't really jive real well when people are being put in prison, beaten, malnourished, killed, raped, whatever, for their faith in Christ. Your best life now doesn't sit well with that that crowd. Those people, because if, if, that's, the, if that's the case, and I run into this persecution... I'm gone. Most people are gone when, when it's a, it's a seed planted on shallow soil, on rocky soil. It sprouts up for a minute, but the, the cares of the world burn it away. So I do this every year throughout the month of November simply because I want the gospel to be preached. And this is one, it gives us a time and it gives us uh a focus for a month on praying for our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world. But two, it glorifies God by 30 more days of gospel preaching of truth being made known. So without further ado, that's a, a good five minutes of the video right now. 
Um, and most of the videos that we do from this point on are going to be far, are going to be less than that five minutes that we just spent. Um, we're going to throw out the top 30 uh, countries that are worst for Christian persecution. And then we're going to tell a story about Christians who are persecuted. So we're going to start uh, with the World Watch List. This is where we get, this is from opendoorsusa.org. They uh, do a survey every year, essentially an investigation, a study into the, uh, and they, they list the top 50 um, countries around the world where Christians are persecuted the most. Uh, we're going to start at 30 and we're going to count our way down. So starting at number 30 on the world watch list is Tunisia. Um, some facts about Tunisia, the region, it's in Africa. Persecution type is Islamic per oppression. Persecution level is very high. Population there is 11,495,000. There are 23,000 Christians uh, in that area, so just about 2%. Um, the main religion is Islam. Their government is a parliamentary republic, and their leader is is President Beji Kade Esebi. Esebsi. Esebsi. I'll never pronounce these names right, so uh, bear with me. Where the persecution comes from. Most of the persecution in Tunisia results from Islamic society's general hostility toward Christians. While the state has actually become more tolerant of Christians since the Arab Spring uprisings in 2011, there has at the same time been noticeable increase in Islamic radical teachings. Radical Islamic teachings. Foreigners enjoy a good deal of religious freedom in the country so long as they avoid openly engaging in evangelistic activities. Converts to Christianity from Islam experience the worst Christian persecution at the hands of family members, relatives, the community at large, and government authorities. Christians in Tunisia experience such a great deal of persecution that most prefer to only practice their faith in secret. The hostility and pressure they face makes it dangerous to share their faith with anyone, even those closest to them. If others come to know of their Christian faith, believers experience job insecurity, abandonment, and abuse. They are ostracized by family, friends, and the community at large, and are sometimes violently attacked. For those reasons, gathering for worship or fellowship is extremely difficult. They also lack the right to legally identify themselves as Christian, which poses problems in the daily lives. Um, so a couple of examples during the World, Wa uh, World Watch List 2018 reporting period, more than a dozen Christians were detained and questioned by the authorities for faith-related reasons. In February 2017, reports indicated that a Christian cemetery in the town of Esfax had been vandalized and believed it was, the incident was religiously motivated. So here's a couple of prayer points, a couple of ways you can pray for Tunisia. Uh, pray for Christian youth who are rejected and persecuted for their faith. Pray for young believers who wish to marry as they face a great deal of opposition and pressure from non-believing family members. Pray for those who are persecuted. Many lose hope and lack direction. Pray they will know that God is always with them. Pray that the Lord will hinder the plans of Muslim extremists to create chaos in the country. Pray that he will touch their hearts that they might bow their knees to Jesus. So a quick story. Um, this is from persecution.org. Um, International Christian Concern. A month ago, the Somali-based terror group Al-Shabaab flagged down a passenger bus traveling from Garissa to Masalani, Kenya, separating Muslims from Christians. Consequently, oh, that stopped the bus and separated Muslims from Christians. Consequently, Frederick Ngui Ngande, Joshua Uku Obila were killed for declining to recite the Islamic creed, the Shahada, one of the five pillars of Islam. So, and here, uh, just in the first paragraph of this story, um, and it happened about a month ago. So Al-Shabaab stops this bus. They separate the Muslims on the bus from the Christians on the bus. Uh, they take these two men, Frederick Ngui Ngande and Joshua Uoko Obila, Obila were, and killed them because they refused to recite the Islamic Creed. 
According to a witness, quote, the armed Somali fighters ordered all of us to get off the bus and produce our identity cards. They singled out three passengers and ordered them to remain down the bus as we boarded. They asked them if they were Muslims and if they knew the Shahada, the seven verses of Surah Fatihi, Fatiha. One of them recited part of the Shahada and was allowed to return on the bu- to the bus. The witness, unquote. The witness added, quote, The other two kafir men refused to obey the jihad fighters and remained adamant that Christ is their savior and they could not deny the Christian faith. They were shot dead, unquote. Mr. Frederick was a member of the East Africa Pentecostal Church in Masalani, where he led a church, the church services and the choir. His pastor, Cosmas Winzi, described him as, quote, a faithful follower of Christ who is committed to the church and his family. He had a passion for God's work and loved the fellowship of brethren, unquote. While speaking with International Christian Concern, Frederick's wife, Penian Mwatha, eulogized her husband as, quote, caring, prayerful, and a friendly person who hope to spend the rest of my life with. I am still in shock. Frederick has left me with a two-year-old son too soon. It is painful to lose him, unquote. Joshua was a mechanic of the attacked bus that is owned by a Somali businessman, Victor Oketch. Joshua's brother reported, quote, his Somali colleagues, the driver and the conductor, did nothing to defend him. This shows you how religious animosity is at the core of the persecution in northeastern Kenya, unquote. So, um, there you have it. Uh, I mean, immediately our example is two men who are, are martyred, two men who were killed, murdered because they refused to say um, the Shahada. Uh, there is no God but no God but Allah and Muhammad is a prophet of God. They refused to say it, refused to denounce, renounce the fact that Jesus Christ is God and is their Savior, and because of that, they were were murdered. Um, happens far more often than we'd like to know and that's again part of the reason I do this month because we can take every single day and we can share a story of brothers and sisters who are are beaten raped in prison or murdered for their faith in Jesus Christ and we need to continue we need to be in prayer for them they 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 covet our prayers immensely um so it's a persecution that at this point we'll probably never know in the states in our lifetime um people think we're getting closer to to knowing that but i don't think we ever will in all our lifetime we'll know this level of persecution so we need to pray for those brothers and sisters who are going through that um continue to pray for the families of these two men um Pray for the two-year-old son that was left behind. Um, Pray for their churches. Pray for their their pastors. And pray for the people in their area that still uh, experience this persecution all the time. Uh, And as always, keep praying for all of our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world. Um, And, as usual, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. And until tomorrow, Soli Deo Gloria.